I read 58 books this year and to give you a quick snapshot sense of whether or not they're worth your time, I'm going to try to rate and review them in only one sentence. So let's go. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. The first book in the extremely popular YA series that is truly worth the hype. A page turner with very well developed characters, which is a rare combination to stumble across. 4 out of 5 stars. Me picking Before We Were Strangers by Brenda Novak instead of Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlina was a genuine mistake, as was this entire book, honestly. 2 out of 5 stars. Get ready for the extensive and absolutely unnecessary descriptions with zero substance and no plot. The biggest disappointment of the year award goes to The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. 1 out of 5 stars. The Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbott. A series centering a serial killer dating an FBI agent that started off super strongly but left me a bit underwhelmed by the end of the final book. Overall rating for all 5 books around 3 out of 5 stars. People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I wish less time was spent meeting people on vacations and more time on our main characters and getting them from friends to lovers. 3 out of 5 stars. The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. If a romance between an annoying Disney adult and a billionaire with daddy issues sounds fun to you, this is it. Look no further. 2 out of 5 stars. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is how you approach the sensitive topic of grooming, abuse, and coming to terms with your trauma. This is an absolute masterpiece. Dare I say, the best read of 2023. 5 out of 5 stars. Normal People by Sally Rooney. 273 pages of pure miscommunication between self-absorbed, privileged people. Being one of those myself, I liked it. Three and a half stars out of five. Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. For being a thriller, this could have benefited from being a tad bit more thrilling. And I was not a big fan of the final twist either, so three out of five stars. Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. Fake dating, aunties that are desperate to find you a match, and a lot of spice. This was truly fun to read, three out of five stars. The Folk of the Air trilogy by Holly Black, so The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, and The Queen of Nothing. I kept reading this series with hopes that it will eventually get better, but it never did. So whoever is responsible for hyping this up, you have some explaining to do. Overall rating, 2 out of 5 stars. Bunny by Mona Avad. What the fuck is going on? That was the only question I was asking myself while reading this book. And I have yet to find an answer to that question. 1 out of 5 stars. The Silent Patient. I will try not to butcher the author's name, but it's here on the screen. This had its faults, but overall I feel like it lived up to the hype that it gets. The premise, the pacing, the twists. It was pretty good, honestly. 4 out of 5 stars. The Mystery of the Blue Train by Agatha Christie. A mysterious death on the train, a cursed jewel that is missing, sounds like a recipe for the perfect mystery to me. 4 out of 5 stars. The Housemaid by Freda McFadden. This was a classic case of a popcorn thriller. Improbable, but unputdownable and fun nevertheless. 4 out of 5 stars. Better than the movies by Lynn Painter. A high school fake dating story that was so cute and wholesome that even my cynical heart gave up and absolutely melted. 4 out of 5 stars. Happy Place by Emily Henry, a brilliant second chance romance that finally turned me as well into an Emily Henry stan. 5 out of 5 stars. Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid, a story about marital infidelity that still packs a punch despite it being super super short. 3 out of 5 stars. Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. So this second chance romance truly had a potential, but somehow in the 15 years that our main characters spent apart, the MMC of this book turned from a sweet guy into a walking red flag, so 3 out of 5 stars. Housemate Secret by Freda McFadden. This is the sequel to The Housemate, which I'm afraid did not quite measure up to the first book. And like I said in my Goodreads review, the twist was not twisting the second time around. 3 out of 5 stars. Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I wish characters in second chance romances stop doing unredeemable actions that end up spoiling the whole book for me. 3 
out of 5 stars. I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. I said it once, I'll say it again. This book needs to be distributed to all family channels out there. It was witty and powerful, 5 out of 5 stars. After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid, a book that explores the topics of family, marital problems, and love in long-term relationships. Taylor Jenkins Reid did not disappoint here, 4 out of 5 stars. If We Were Villains by ML Rio, a dark academia book that I would have enjoyed more had I not been too stupid to understand endless Shakespearean references. 3 out of 5 stars. Walking Around by Emily Rath, a why choose hockey romance, almost 800 pages of 4 people doing nothing but fucking like rabbits, no thank you. 1 out of 5 stars. 7 Days in June by Tia Williams. Black authors do truly know how to write exceptional romances and this is what 7 Days in June was. A remarkable love story and a delight to read. 5 out of 5 stars. Each Read by Emily Henry. The most delectable banter that you will ever come across in a romance book. This and Happy Place are on top of my Emily Henry books. 5 out of 5 stars. Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. The second book in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. There was something about this particular one that just scratched my brain. This is my favorite one of the three, so 5 out of 5 stars. As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. This is the book in which Pippa, the FMC of this book, went off the rails for absolutely no reason. 3 out of 5 stars. Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. Beautiful second chance romance with precious main characters that just walk right out of the page and break your hearts. I initially rated this one 4 out of 5 stars, but as time passed I realized that this is actually a solid 5 star read for me. Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. Never imagined that a book can give me the ick. That was until I read this cliche and cringy piece of literature. 2 out of 5 stars. The Couple at Number 9 by Claire Douglas. An atmospheric, cozy, a bit slow paced thriller but with a great unique twist. I liked it very much. 4 out of 5 stars. Never Lie by Frida McFadden. A gentle reminder that the shocking twist that you incorporate into your book needs to make at least a little bit of sense and not totally contradict what you have already written on the first 200 pages of your book. 1 out of 5 stars. Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. This book was so good that not even an accidental pregnancy drop destroyed it for me, okay? Also Jacob gets the title of the best book boyfriend of 2023. 4 and a half stars out of 5. The Wedding Crasher by Mia Sosa. A fun fake dating story but nothing you haven't seen before. 3 out of 5 stars. Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Practice definitely makes perfect in case of Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was her debut novel and despite my fondness towards her books, this was a total flop. 2 out of 5 stars. A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham, a psychological thriller that leans heavily on the psychological rather than thrilling side. I like the writing and the ambience. 4 out of 5 stars. None of this is true by Lisa Jewell. If not for a couple of problematic takes. This would have been the best thriller I read in 2023. Truly unique and unputdownable. 4 out of 5 stars. The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. Cozy, heartwarming fantasy that feels like a cup of the most delicious tea on a rainy evening. 4.5 stars out of 5. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zivin. A love story that is not a romance. One of the most interesting and unique books that I have ever read. 5 out of 5 stars. A Man Called Oof by Frederick Backman. A touching story about old grumpy man. I was assured I would cry reading it, but I did not. Don't know if it says more about me or the book though. 3 out of 5 stars. You Again by Kate Goldberg. A contemporary telling of when Harry met Sally with no third act breakup, which is rare for romances this day. 3 out of 5 stars. Mexican Gothic by Silvia Morena Garcia. Yet another book that did not live up to the hype for me. This was a weird combination of 250 pages of nothing going on and a ton of distress disturbing stuff packed in the last 50 pages. Two and a half stars out of five. The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. Decent slow burn thriller with multiple POVs that wraps up nicely by the end of it. Don't have anything bad to say about this one. Three and a half stars out of five. Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. Honestly, pretty much the same thing I said about every summer after. Sometimes the characters in the second chance romances do not actually deserve a second chance. Three out of five stars. Get Alive, Chloe Brown by Talia. 
Sarah Hibbert, a sweet spicy rom-com with adorable main characters, but kind of ridiculous third act conflict. 3 out of 5 stars. Where the Crow That Sing by Delia Owens, a contemporary classic at this point, a mixture of murder mystery, a romance and coming of age story, this was a solid read. 4 out of 5 stars. Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young, a sweet accidental pregnancy romance that I personally did not love, but I would still recommend it to people around me. 3 out of 5 stars. Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel, a Groundhog Day type of a book featuring toxic group of friends and a murder mystery of one of them. It had everything necessary to be a perfect read, but instead it was a mess. 2 out of 5 stars. The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. I cannot believe it took me so many years to finally read this masterpiece and watch the movies. And the story is sadly also more relevant than ever. 5 out of 5 stars. Catching Fire by Susan Collins. Tell me I'm not the only one who thinks that Gale is too irrelevant to be thinking about him this much during the Deadly Games. 4 out of 5 stars. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I'm proud to finally say I do not get the hype guys. I do not. For the sake of cute dragons only. 2 out of 5 stars. And I'm also in the middle of the Mockingjay and a couple of other books right now, but honestly, with holidays, work, and everything going on, I barely have time to read these days. So guess you will have to wait for my thoughts on those till 2024. So those were all 58 books that I read this year, and I think I had a pretty decent reading year. Let me pat myself on the back. Let me know what you were reading in 2023 and what was your favorite and your least favorite read of the year. And if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel to never miss an upload from me. Stay safe, happy holidays, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.